This is the second section of chapter five on probability and this section is on Venn diagrams. So we're just going to go through uh, some notation to do with Venn diagrams. First thing I'm going to be looking at is the intersection in a Venn diagram. We use this symbol to represent the intersection and that's the overlap of two events. So event A and event B and uh, we write it like this, A intersect B or you might want to say A and B, the event A and B happening. And in Venn diagrams, we have this rectangle. Everything goes inside the rectangle, any numbers or letters or probabilities go inside this rectangle. We don't draw anything outside of it. And we call this rectangle here a sample space. And normally you might see uh, an S here or a funny looking S to denote the sample space. And when we draw a Venn diagram, uh, we should really put an S here to donate that this is the sample space. Secondly, we're going to move on to something called the union. And the union is the contents of all of A and all of B. And we write it like this, A union B. Or we could think of this as A or B. Then lastly, we've got something called the complement. Now, normally we would see like an event like A and B with like a little dash here. So here you can see that I've shaded everything that's not in A. So we would write it like this, A with a little dash like that. That means not A. So we could write that as not A. And we know from GCSE that the way that you work out not something or the probability that something's not going to happen is one minus the probability it's going to happen. So you can write the probability of A not happening, A with a little dash, is one minus the probability of A happening. So this is actually our first formula to do with probability. There will be uh, a few more in uh, this unit and in next year's uh, statistics and mechanics unit as well. And the last thing before we get on to the, some examples is that when you're filling in an, uh, a Venn diagram, you're filling in numbers or probabilities, always fill in the overlap first. So here I would fill in this part, put the numbers or probabilities in this part in first and then work your way out. And probably the last bit you're going to be filling in is this bit outside of these two circles, but still inside the sample space. Example three, in a class of 30 students, there are seven in the choir, five are in the school band, two are in the choir and the band. A student is chosen at random from the class. And what we need to do in part A is to draw a Venn diagram to represent this information. So the first thing is um, I'm going to just define my events. So B is going to be um, in the school band, makes sense, B for band, and C is going to be in the choir. Right, so here's my Venn diagram, ready to put these numbers in, and I put S here because this is my sample space. So remember, we fill in the overlap first. Now the overlap represents those that are in the choir and the band, or the band and the choir, and it's here. Two are in the choir and the band. So we'll put the number two here. Then we'll go back to the other bits of information. There are seven in the choir. Now this whole circle needs to be seven, but we don't put seven here because that would mean nine in the choir. We put the number five here because all of this needs to add up to seven. The whole choir needs to add up to seven. So this is five. This still means that seven people in the choir, but two of those people in the choir also in the school band. Now we're going to this bit of information here, five are in the school band. Well, two of those people that are in the school band also in the choir. So that leaves three people that are just in the band, but they're not in the choir. Now we've not quite finished because it says that there are 30 students. And if we add these up, three plus two plus five only makes 10 students. That leaves 20 students that are not in the band or the choir. So we need to make sure that we put the number here. And that's often forgotten in questions. Don't forget to put the number 
that's outside of these circles. Now, this might not always be uh, a non-zero number. You might have zero here. These circles may give you all of the people, but don't forget this number here. It's easy to be left out. And there's our Venn diagram. Part A is done. Right, part B, you want to find a probability that one, the student is not in the band. OK, well, we need to know how many students it's going to be out of. Well, that's out of 30. Now all that's up to 30 there. It's out of 30. So how many of students are not in the band? And actually what I might do is use the notation. So I want to find the probability that the student is not in the band. So we'd write it like this. So if we said already it's out of 30. Now, what's the probability they're going to be in the band? Well, that's there's five of them. So the probability they're not going to be in the band is 30 minus five. So that gives me 25 over 30. We could simply find out if we wanted to divide both by five and we get five over six. Now we can check that on the Venn diagram because all those people that are not in the band are all the numbers added up, which are not in this circle. And that's five and tw uh, 20. So that gives us a 25 out of 30. Then the second part of part B, it says the probability the student is not in the choir or the band. So looking at my Venn diagram, I can see that there are 20 students that are not in the choir or the band. So that will be 20 over 30, I can simplify that, divide both by 10 and get two thirds. Example four, a vet surveys 100 uh, of her clients. She finds that and there's all this information here. I'm not going to read through all of that. A client is chosen at random. Find a probability that the client owns dogs only, uh, does not own fish, does not own dogs, cats or fish. So we're going to do a Venn diagram for this now. There are three categories that they own dogs, they own cats, or they own, they own fish. So we've defined what owning a dog, cat, and fish are going to be D, C, and F. This is going to be a Venn diagram, but with three overlapping uh, circles because we've got three categories here. So here are my three overlapping circles. This one's going to be dogs, this one's going to be cats, and this one here is going to be fish. And my S here showing that this is a sample space. Now we've got lots of overlaps here. When you've got more than two circles overlapping, you start at the very center. So this is where all the circles overlap. So this is the thing that we're going to fill in first. So this is those that own dogs, cats, and fish. Now that's this piece of information here. So I'm going to probably tick them off as we do them. And that's seven. So I'm going to put seven here at the very center. Now we move to these overlaps and we're going to fill these ones in. OK, so let's have a look at this one. 15 own dogs and cats. That's this overlap here. Now we've already got seven there. So we don't put 15 here. We put eight because those two together in this overlap need to make 15. So we'll put eight here and that's that overlap done. Now we'll move on to this one. Own dogs and fish. Dogs and fish is this overlap. It says it needs to be 11. We don't write 11 here because all of this overlap needs to add up to 11. We've got seven there already. So this is going to be four. That's why we always fill in the middle first. And this overlap here, those that own cats and fish, that's this bit of information. 10 own cats and fish. And you should be getting the idea now. We don't do 10 here. There's seven there already. All of that needs to add up to 10. So this is going to be three. So the next part of the Venn diagram we're going to fill in are these parts here. Right, so 25 own dogs. So this in this part of the Venn diagram needs to add up to 25, but we don't write 25 here. We work out 8 plus 4, which is 12, plus 7, which is 19. All of this needs to add up to 25. And if we've already got 19 there, this needs to be 6. That makes 25. Then we move on to this part here of the Venn diagram. So we're looking at how many own cats. It says 53. So all of this needs to add up to 53. Don't write 53 here. 8 plus 5. 
sorry, eight plus seven is 15, plus three is 18. So we need to work out 53 minus 18 to work out what number goes here. And that's 35, so we'll put 35 here and tick this one off. So we're just left with uh, this part here. Well, actually there is one more bit, we'll look at that in a moment. How many own fish? There's 40 that own fish. Don't write 40 here. This adds up to 14. So if we do 40 minus 14, we get 26. So this is here. Now this sample space needs to add up to 100 clients. Some of those clients may not own any of these uh, types of pets. They may have um, different types of pets. So there may be a number out here. And the way we're going to work it out, we don't write 100 here. What we do, we add all of these numbers up here. We take them away from 100 and we see what's left for this part here. So if we add all of these together, this makes 89. That means that there are 11 clients missing. So we need to fill in 11 here like that so now we can answer the question so final probability that the client owns dogs only let's tick that off dogs only that's just these six they only own dogs we're not interested in the people that own other pets as well so that's six out of the 100 which we can leave like that or we can write 0 0.06 or three over 50, doesn't really matter. Part B, does not own fish. So that's gonna be everybody outside of this circle. So that's gonna be six plus eight, plus 35, plus 11 over 100. So let's write that down. So six plus eight, plus 35, plus 11 over 100. Or we could do four plus seven plus three plus 26 and take that away from 100. Or where we could say this in bit of information here, 40 own fish, then 60 don't add fish, uh, have fish. And that all checks out because all of this adds up to 60 anyway. So 60 over 100. If we divide all of those by 20, or we could write 0 0.6, or yeah, divide. Uh, both by 20 and we get three fifths and then the last part part c does not own dogs cats or fish so those that don't own dogs cats or fish are these 11 here so that's going to be 11 out of 100 or we can write 0 0.11 so you should now be able to do exercise 5b on pages 74 to 75 of the textbook.